Well, hello there. My name is Beth Gaff and I am the technology trainer, systems administrator, and robotics instructor here at the Peabody Public Library. Welcome back to another session of virtual field trips. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at landmarks. Um, one of the landmarks that are gonna be listed on our website, we are actually going to be doing uh, as a program for next month. So we're gonna skip over that. But as far as all the other landmarks um, in America, um, or maybe even beyond that, uh, we're gonna be taking a look at that. Um, and as always, all of our virtual field trips always include your lesson plans, curriculums, things to get you going to get those educational credits that you may require uh, in order to move on either to another grade, graduation, whatever that may be. So I am really, really excited today to take this adventure with you. And uh, without further ado, let's get started with Landmarks. Well, hello there. Welcome back to another session of Virtual Field Trips and Visits. Uh, like the introduction mentioned, my name is Beth Gaff here at the Peabody Public Library. I am super excited about today's class. We're going to be talking about um, different kinds of landmarks that are important and why and uh, how we can discover them. Um, you will also notice down below that there are going to be some uh, learning capabilities for you as far as lesson plans, curriculums, activity sheets, links, things along those lines. So please take advantage of those. Uh, they will benefit you in the long run. And plus, they're just really fun. So, um, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize our little graphic here. And what I have gotten into are the 42 best free virtual field trips for kids and families. Uh, that's all you really need to type into your search engine. And I've actually included the link for you down here. So you're able to follow along with me today, or perhaps you would like to venture out um, somewhere else. They do have a lot of different kinds of virtual field trips that you can explore on. Uh, today we are going to be focusing on the landmarks. Uh, we are not going to be going over Ellis Island today because that is our program for July. So we're going to be doing everything about Ellis Island uh, in our program in July. So uh, we are going to be skipping that. But as far as the other ones, we are going to take a look at all of these here on our list. We're going to first start with Buckingham Palace. So I'm just going to click on my link, which is going to take me out somewhere else. And very cool. Okay, so let me go up here. Uh, so the Buckingham Palace is where the Queen lives, uh, and this would be all about royalty. So let's just take a look. Uh, this is a portrait of the Queen um, for the Royal Her Majesty coronation. Uh, so you could find out more about that. So that's what this is. Uh, being as this is virtual, we are able to move this around. That is pretty cool. So I'll definitely be including this link down below for you so you're able to explore. This is where they sit. These are the chairs of estate. Uh, this is her throne. And it looks like that's all that's in there. So we're going to go to the grand staircase. So this is the Grand Staircase, um, and it tells you a little bit more about that, the cost. Very awesome. Oh, we have more up here. Okay, so all of these little eyes mean that you. this is um, Perseus and Medusa from your Greek heroes uh, and a decorative scheme. So you can kind of look. It's almost like an art museum here. So, and that takes us back up. Very awesome. And our last is the white drawing room. 
and this would take you into different sections of that. So I'm not going to go over every single item here, but I'm just showing you how they are clickable. Uh, and you'll be able to do your own research and follow along with those. So that is pretty cool. Um, so this also gives you some insight about Buckingham Palace and uh, some of the things that it offers you. Uh, there is a lot of information on this website, so you're definitely going to want, and I'm just going through it quickly because we have a lot to cover today, but you're definitely going to want to go through this and watch some of these videos, look at some of these links, uh, maybe even go into some of the items that are up top here. And this tells you about the royal family. So, um, this would be considered a landmark, which is Buckingham Palace. So, let's move on to, okay, so in Buckingham Palace, you can go room to room and see all the amazing historical objects in the palace. So, we did a lot of that already, but you can go in there and elaborate even more if you would like. Washington, D.C. is next. Um, we can pick and choose for more than 24 uh, landmarks which include the nation's capital, the White House, the Supreme Court, even the zoo. Um, it tells you about who gives you those tours. And there's videos, quizzes, uh, reader polls, and interactive maps. So let's take a look at that. All right. So this takes you into an introduction of the great tours, how it became... So there's different lectures in here. This would be great for educational purposes in all of the different um, items that the Washington, D.C. has to offer. Let's see what some of these great tours are. And I'm not sure how long this video is, but let's take a look at it. Hello. I'm Richard Curran, Distinguished Scholar and Ambassador at Large at the Smithsonian Institution, coming to you courtesy of the Great Courses. Every spring, millions of students and teachers from all over the United States come to the nation's capital on school trips. They come to experience firsthand the monuments, memorials, museums, and other sites that help commemorate and define the American experience. I made that trip with my school more than 50 years ago. It had a profound influence on my life. It's why I later joined the Smithsonian and have worked there for my whole career. Now this year, that annual right for students and teachers and indeed millions of others from across the country and around the world has been foreclosed because of the global coronavirus pandemic. Though visits to Washington DC have been canceled, our nation's capital as a place, a symbol, a living textbook of our American experience is still here and will certainly endure. Even during challenging times, maybe even especially in such times, it's important to remember and embrace who we are, what we believe in, and what makes us Americans. Our nation's capital helps us do just that. So while you can't come to Washington, the Smithsonian has joined with the great courses to bring Washington to you. And thanks to the generosity of the great courses, we're doing it for free. The Great Tours Washington, D.C. includes 24 online and freely accessible audiovisual lecture tours of the sights and sounds of Washington. Each one's about a half an hour long and includes site visits and ample illustrations. Now, I'll be your tour guide as we visit the U.S. Capitol Building, the White House and the Supreme Court, Arlington Cemetery, the Lincoln Memorial, the Washington Monument, the Smithsonian Museums, and more. You'll visit the National Zoo to see the pandas, and you'll visit Mount Vernon to see how George Washington envisioned the then new nation. You'll learn about how the struggle for civil rights, women's suffrage, and other movements were expressed in marches, demonstrations, and events. You'll learn about the core documents of freedom at the National Archives and about the work of our Library of Congress. You'll see how the city's residents and visitors typically spend their leisure time 
in our parks, at our restaurants, our stadiums, and our great performing arts venues like the Kennedy Center. You'll visit the National Cathedral and other religious institutions that express our diverse beliefs and our core values. And along the way, we'll talk to some of the key figures in the making of the contemporary nation's capital, from Colin Powell to chef and humanitarian Jose Andres, from master cellist Yo-Yo Ma to the secretary of the Smithsonian Lonnie Bunch and many others. So enjoy your virtual visit to Washington, D.C. And at this time of great challenge and isolation, take heart in the fact that you two are part of a larger nation and connected to its history and to its future as exemplified by its capital city. Thank you, be safe, and take care. All right, well, that was a pretty cool um, little introduction of the different kinds of tours you can take. And it looks like that's what all of these are here on the side. So definitely feel free to get in here and take your own. They have a Holocaust Museum. Take your own tour. It looks like there's 24. Uh, we just did the introduction. Yeah, so it looks like there's 24 different tours that you can take that all involve Washington, D.C. So that is pretty amazing. And, of course, you can go into other categories, other videos, features, things along those lines. So, all right, let's go back. And we're now going to take a look at Mount Rushmore. Uh, this is a virtual tour that is created with 3D scans of the mountains. So let's check that out. Wow, that is pretty cool. So this is showing us what it's actually, okay, cool. So we can move these around. What is this? Okay, so then we can go to the observation deck. This is pretty amazing. Very, very, okay. And there is our primary stuff here. So this gets you a little closer. Wow, that's super close. We're like right up in his nose there. Let's get out of that. Wow, look at that view. That is just amazing. So this is a 360 little virtual tour. What's this? Oh, okay. Uh, that you can actually take and kind of go around the park itself and just look around at all the different things. The artwork on this is just simply amazing. Oh, and you can go inside even. How cool is that? Well, we're going to go inside. Okay. All right. Okay. We can zoom in, zoom out. And take us back to the beginning. This is the other angle. Wow. Looks like it's from the top. Nice. All right. So uh, you can also use the 3D Explorer. Let's see what that is. So it looks like it's just loading a 3D model for us. Oh, wow. That is neat. Okay, you double click, that gets you inside. That is super awesome. And then we have this one and this one, a 3D model of the actual presidents that are on the mountains in Mount Rushmore. That is just simply amazing. I'm trying to go back. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm trying to go faster than the computer wants me to. So, there you have it. Let's see. We got a video. 
Let's see what this video consists of. Let's take a look at the video. In May of 2010, the National Park Service collaborated with SciArc and the Center for Digital Documentation and Visualization, based in Scotland, to laser scan the entire Mount Rushmore sculpture in order to create the most accurate model to date. The documentation team also consisted of local engineering experts from Respec and WIS Associates, who were already familiar with intricacies of the mountain. The documentation team spent two weeks laser scanning and photographically documenting the site so that no part of the sculpture would be missed. The scanning of the faces of the presidents, in particular, presented a unique challenge. Because of the protruding features of the presidents' faces, the team would have to scan around them from many different angles, while making sure that the scanner was set up at an optimum distance from the rock surface. In order to get all around Jefferson's nose, to get all the details of Roosevelt's mustache, the only solution was to repel the scanner down the face of the sculpture. To ensure the stability of the scanner, a special tripod rig was designed by the team, engineered by Hermanson Egg Engineering, and manufactured locally in Rapid City, South Dakota. It was a difficult and dangerous task, but the Mount Rushmore rope access team skillfully climbed down the face of the sculpture with the laser scanner and special tripod rig in order to capture the necessary scans. By the end of those two weeks, over 200 laser scans were performed, collecting about 3.5 billion data points that would make up the complete point cloud model of the sculpture and park grounds. Along with the laser scan data, the team also collected detailed photographic documentation which was overlain on the bare point cloud and created a finished lifelike model of the mountain. Once complete, the SIARC team began to work with the park in order to utilize the 3D model for their preservation and educational needs. With this complete digital model, the Mount Rushmore Park staff now has a very precise way to map the contours of the mountain and all the cracks in the stone that they must monitor on the faces of the presidents. Beyond aiding with preservation, the data is also providing a new way for the National Park Service to educate the public about the Mount Rushmore National Memorial through virtual tours, photographs, drawings, and other educational content. To find out more about this project, you can visit the Mount Rushmore page and explore all the multimedia and lesson plans for K-12 that can be downloaded and used in geometry, art, and social studies classrooms across the country. Well, that was certainly educational, and I'm glad we took the minute to take a look at that. Uh, let's see. They also have guided tours, more in-depth items. Um, let's see what this is. My name is Lane Cordemeyer. I'm Assistant Chief of Interpretation here at Mount Rushmore National Memorial. I've been here for 21 years now. I am also in charge of the preservation of Mount Rushmore and the rope access team. The three things that we're going to look at today as we look at the sculpture closely, one of them is the tool marks left behind within the carving process. Detailed from the beginning of the carving to the end, you'll be able to see the remnants within the tool marks left behind of the carving era. The second thing we're going to look at today is where we monitor the sculpture today and why. We'll look at some of the rock blocks within the sculpture and what we do to keep track of them. The third is that we're going to look at the unfinished places on Mount Rushmore, the locations where the workers and Borgum could have done more and potentially the reason why they didn't. All right, so there's more things that you can actually go in, venture around and see what is going to work for you. So we are gonna now go back to the uh, website here and we're going to take a look at Mount Vernon. Uh, you can take a look inside of George Washington's home the same um, way you would clicking through the Street View or the Google Maps. So let's take a look at what that is. Maybe if it wants to load for us. Wow, this is pretty cool. 
And you can turn around. Woo. I'm definitely going too fast. All right. Let me see if I can get us back where we were here. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right, let's click on some of these dots. This is the size and the dimensions. Dwarfed the ma majority of houses. Okay, this is the bullseye window. That's pretty cool. Um, let's go this way. Central Passage. Wow, there is a lot. Actually, let's go to here first. Open 365 days a year. Um, education. Plan your visit, the estate. So this is all about the plantation of where, oops, of where uh, George Washington. So if you wanted to buy tickets to go here, let's say you want to go this Saturday, two passes. Um, looks like it's $26 a person for an adult, 13 for children, 6 to 11, and kids 5 and under are free. Uh, so there is a lot to explore in this house. So let me close this one. This is pretty, pretty neat. The original door is still there. Um, this is the original front door of the house. You can go to the east area. Ooh, it's making me dizzy. All right, well, you get the idea. So you can get in there and you can take a really good look at Mount Vernon. This takes you a look into George Washington's home. It is a landmark. So um, let me go back. There we go. Um, it is a landmark. So you're definitely going to want to spend uh, some time actually being in here. I kind of want to go back. Let me close that in this and I kind of want to just go back into the beginning of this where okay so this is the George Washington virtual tour so there you have it so this takes us all the way around the actual um, grounds so you can actually take a look at all of these different buildings that you would be able to see in person and their significance. Okay. Uh, the next one we're going to do is the Plymouth Plantation. We can take a tour of the site of the very first Thanksgiving and learn some history behind the event itself. Wow. Okay. So this talks about all of the different, this is a 17 minute video. So this gives you some insight in the history. Let's take a look at the slideshow. So it's almost like a pilgrim type atmosphere. So you'd be able to explore and live as they did back in the day. And things that they did back in the day. That is pretty cool. Uh, what else can we do? The first Thanksgiving, this gives you a guide. Okay, so here's all of your lessons, Coraline lessons. So let's go into the first one they offer you. All right, and then you're able to go in and choose how you would like to do your lesson. So let's go back. 
Uh, let's see, videos and photos. That's what this is. Okay. All right, what about the feast? Awesome. Uh, they have historical letters. Letter from a pilgrim, the message from the Mayflower. That's nice. Pretty cool stuff there. So there's a lot to investigate when it comes to Thanksgiving, the history of and why we celebrate it. So that's all in here. You have all your core curriculums. Uh, so definitely have fun with this. This was from Scholastic. All right, last but never least, we're going to take a look at the White House. Uh, and it looks like we are not going to be able to watch that video. Um, it's been outdated probably because we have a different president now. Um, but quite honestly, even though there's not a link to that, uh, Washington, D.C., is going to have a lot of that information for you as far as the White House goes. All right. Well, we went through a lot of stuff today. So I'm hoping that you're going to be able to kind of split some of this up for yourself and put it where it needs to be so you're able to learn and get those credits that you need. And even if there's no credits involved, the experience is all about knowledge and learning uh, and these are some amazing landmarks that are available at our fingertips at this moment. Obviously, it's not going to be as great as being there, but this seems to be just as good if you cannot be there. So, hey, thank you so much for being a part of today's session. I really appreciate you, and I appreciate you taking the time to go into this with me. Uh, if you have any ideas for future uh, field trips that we could do. I'm actually thinking about making this an in-person program now that we're doing that here at the library again. So we'll still do the virtual, but then you'd also be able to come in and do it as a in-person event. Um, this is still kind of up in the air, and if I do, it probably won't be until August. Uh, but without you, there'd be no reason for me to even have these. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of it. I want to thank Google, Screenomatic, our 42 best free virtual field trips website, uh, Google, and everything else that might be included that uh, made us be able to have this today. So thank you so much. Have an outstanding day and have fun looking at those um, landmarks because they really are truly uh, some major history that can be learned there. So thanks again. Have a great one. Bye.